A distance time graph shows how far an object moves as time passes. Remember that to plot graphs, we should start by labeling our axes. For a distance time graph, our y-axis represents the distance traveled in meters, and our x-axis represents the time taken in seconds. There are many situations that we can describe using a distance time graph. For example, a car journey or a long distance race. But let's look at an example of a helicopter rising into the air. As the helicopter moves, let's use the graph to record how far it's traveled off the ground. First, the helicopter rises slowly. It then stays at the same height for a few seconds and then rises quickly. As you can see, we use the graph to keep a record of the height as the helicopter rose. But remember that the y-axis can also represent a horizontal distance. It doesn't have to be a height that we're describing. You won't be drawing graphs from animations like this in your exam, but you could have a journey described to you in words or be given numerical data in a table for the key points in a journey. Make sure you're confident when sketching these kinds of graphs from both of these types of information. So now we have our distance time graph, but how do we use it and what does it tell us? Well, we can read the graph to determine how far the object has moved at a point in time. Remember that when we read a graph, we're looking at the x and the y values at a point on the graph. For distance time graphs, the y value tells us the distance traveled and the x value tells us the time taken to travel this distance. So in this example, we can see from this point that the helicopter had traveled two meters after two seconds. From this second point, we can see that the helicopter has traveled six meters after seven seconds. But there are other ways we can use the graph. For example, what can we determine from the general shape of the graph? Well, the steeper the gradient, the faster the object is moving at this point in time. Remember that a gradient tells us how much the y variable changes when the x variable changes, or simply what the steepness of the graph is. So from looking at the graph, we can see that the helicopter was moving faster during this last part of the journey, as the graph is steepest here. If we look more closely, we'll see that the helicopter moved two meters during both of these sections of the graph, but it took four seconds to do so in the first section and only two seconds in the last section. So the helicopter must have been moving faster to cover the same distance in less time. But what about this horizontal section in the middle? What does this mean? If the graph is horizontal, then the object is stationary at this point in time. Remember that if a graph is horizontal, then that means when the x value changes, the y value won't change at all. In other words, as time passes, the distance the object has traveled isn't changing at all. So that means that the object is not moving. In your exam, you'll be expected to be able to describe the motion shown in a distance time graph qualitatively. Let's try doing this now with an example. The distance time graph below shows the observed moments of a herd of wildebeest for one hour. Describe, without calculation, the motion of the herd during this time. So here, where the question says without calculation, it's saying we don't need to go and calculate the gradients for the sections of this graph. We can just describe them in words and save ourselves a lot of time. As we can see, there are three different sections of the graph. So let's structure our answer by looking at each section individually. For step one, describe the first section of the graph. This first section starts at the origin and ends at the point where the distance is 24 and the time is 20. So we can describe this section by saying that the herd travels 24 kilometers in 20 minutes. Notice that we used kilometers and minutes instead of meters and seconds, as these are the units given on the axes of the graph. We might have lost marks if we didn't notice this. For step two, describe the second section of the graph. Although we aren't calculating the actual gradients, we should still describe them and show we understand what they tell us about this motion. Since this section has a shallower gradient than the first, we can deduce that the herd must be traveling more slowly now. Let's also figure out some times and distances for this section. We can just do this in our heads. 
So we've gone from 24 kilometers to 30 kilometers on the y-axis. So the herd must have traveled 6 kilometers. And then the time has gone from 20 minutes to 35 minutes on the x-axis. So this must have taken them 15 minutes. Overall, we can write that the herd slows down and travels 6 kilometers in 15 minutes. Then for step three, describe the final section of the graph. Notice that this section is horizontal. Remember that a horizontal line in a distance time graph means the object is not moving. So we can just say that the herd was stationary for the remaining time. We could have figured out what this time is, but we've already shown we know how to read values off this graph well enough. You didn't have to give your answer in this way, so long as you get the key ideas across clearly. You also might not have had to give this much detail, depending on how many marks a question is worth. But if you have the time and don't make any mistakes, then it's usually better to say too much than too little for this kind of question. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.